If you have vintage or antique electronics, one thing you want to try to do is prevent any damage due to power surges or other component failures. One way to do that is to put a current limiter in line with the AC cord. Let's do that on an antique radio. So here's something anybody can do if you want to prevent your old radio. If you've got an old antique radio and you want to prevent any damage due to something failing, um, ultimately we want to protect things like the power transformer and the, uh, the audio output transformer and in this case the dynamic speaker, the electrodynamic speaker coil. So one of the ways we can prevent damage from occurring should something happen like a tube short or a capacitor short is we can use what's called a dim bulb which is basically a, a light bulb in series with the power cord. And that's what I'm going to do on this radio. I'm just going to mount a light socket because I've got lots of room in here. I'll just mount it in the back of the cabinet here underneath the chassis. And that way, if something catastrophic does happen, all that's going to happen is the light bulb is going to glow. It's going to draw the current through the light bulb and that will hopefully prevent things like transformer windings from overheating. Ideally, you need a light bulb that's higher than the current consumption of the radio. So this draws about 55, 60 watts. So obviously the, the current available 60 watt light bulbs isn't going to cut it. Although you could put two of them in parallel. Uh, I have a few old 100 watt bulbs that I stocked up on when they were still available. That's what I currently use in my dim bulb tester over on my bench. So I'm going to put one on this. Now I'm not going to cut anything off uh, the, this old cord, that's my antenna wire, for the, those of you wondering what that was. Um, I don't want to cut any of this old cord because I want to try and keep this thing as original as possible. And since this had a bad plug on it anyway, I'm just going to take this opportunity to put a better plug on here and uh, give myself some peace of mind that I don't have to worry that if I'm using this unit and something goes bad, that I don't have to worry about destroying any parts that I wouldn't be able to replace. I don't anticipate having any failures because I've changed the electrolytics and I've changed all the paper capacitors in here, but this is just for safety's sake. And also the fact since these units themselves are not fused to begin with, there's no power fuses on this thing. so. I don't want to uh, have a fire hazard, not that this radio is going to be left plugged in when it's not actually being used. Let's just take a look at the insulation on this wire here because this also gives me an opportunity to check out the insulation quality of the old wire. See how bad a shape it's in and as you can see it's not in bad shape at all, it's actually in very good shape. So all I'm going to do here I'm just going to take my new power cord, my new modern power cord, and we'll just open up the insulation. I'll take one side. connect it and put a marette on it. The extra wire I'm just going to coil up in the back of the unit here, the extra long power cord. And then the other two wires, they are going to go to my dim bulb connections. The one in the center, which will be this one here, the hot wire, I'll make that one the hot wire coming from the electrical plug. And the uh, the outside here will be the return to the radio. Not that it matters because if the plug was reversed it would just make the other side hot anyway, right? So, But we'll connect this up here and I'll connect the other side of the power cord to the other terminal.
with a 100 watt bulb it'll actually drop the operating voltage on the radio to about 90 probably about 95 volts somewhere in there with a 100 watt bulb so the radio is going to be running on a little bit lower voltage but it'll still be plenty of voltage for plenty of b plus and we'll get good volume out of this thing it'll just prevent uh, overcurrent it'll prevent a runaway problem if something were to short so i'm just going to mount this underneath the chassis here and then we'll put a light bulb in and test it Now what I'll do is I'll just wind this other cord up out of the way and put a zip tie around here and just tie it out of the way so that it's not going to get in the, tangled up on anything. Okay, with the power cord all tied up out of the way, it's now time to put in the, the dim bulb. Power the unit up. My dim bulb glows for a sec. That's the inrush current. And then as it warms up, We'll get some sound. Obviously, I can't let that play, but there you go. It's uh, now the unit itself is protected against any catastrophic failure. If something were to short out, that light would just glow bright but it would limit the amount of current to about 800 milliamps or, or so of power which should uh, prevent the uh, transformers or anything from overheating so not probably not a bad idea if you, anybody who's got any of these old vintage units of this of this vintage if you just want to protect them from future problems um, it's not a bad idea when you've got especially when you've got a cabinet this size where you can put something like this inside it um, it's not a bad idea to do that just to, just for insurance that you're not going to have a problem and also that way if this power cord were to short for example we wouldn't have a fire hazard condition because the light itself would just glow bright and uh, we wouldn't have to worry about any problems down the road that's going to limit the amount of current that's been coincidental with the uh, the pipeline talk you know the interesting thing when you look at the numbers there you go. there's usually a regular radio going here now price of gas and consumer confidence especially in the province of alberta but that's starting to decouple itself so even when you see the price of a barrel of oil go up what we're seeing is this uncertainty related to the pipeline is actually putting a wet blanket on consumer confidence in both the prairie provinces and british columbia i think we're even seeing in the currency trade today uh, to significant parts of the canadian economy not just in the West, but also in Atlantic Canada. People in Ontario also take an interest in energy project because that's code for energy prices. And what we're seeing is that this uncertainty is basically creating a bit of a pall in terms of how people feel in terms of their personal finances. It seems to feed into how they feel about the economy overall. We also think the Canadian economy is going to be stronger in the next... Notable Canadian Northbound, we're now seeing a small delay just north of lights at 72nd. Point side into the Danish territory, drops forward by Stroots, pass, stop, rebound! Oh, how did Pajo miss that? He had a... Here, where the, the awards are pretty much limited, and that's why, that's why ICBC is drowning in all this red ink. They've got to do this. They've got to bring in a cap on this stuff. Well, the awards aren't unlimited in, in any way. Mm -hmm. And so there was a, a natural tendency to be reflectively protected. Mm -hmm. Cloverdale stretch of 176 and 192nd. That's it there.